okay so we were discussing how to determine if a problem of truss is given whether it is better to use the method of joints to solve it or it is better to use the method of sections to solve it now the judgment about this is made by looking at the things that are asked in the problem if it is asked of you to find the forces in all the members not only in bd cd but in ab bc ac it simply says the problem simply says find all the forces in all the members then undoubtedly you should go for method of joints because method of joints will individually take you to one joint at a time and it will find forces related to that joint for example if we try to solve this same problem by the method of joints and we are targeting the identification of forces in all the members then you would ideally start at joint number a because the rule of method of joints says that the joint that is presently under consideration or the joint that you are analyzing at a time should contain at least one known force so one known force is already present on joint a and it should not contain more than two unknown forces so there are only two unknown forces fab and fac so this is an ideal candidate joint a is an ideal candidate for starting the method of joints so when you analyze method of joints for joint a you will eventually find two forces fab and fac once the analysis of joint a is complete this will be known and this will be known now you move on to joint number b now at joint number b this force fab is already known this is unknown and this is unknown so again joint b becomes an ideal candidate for analysis why because there is one known value and not more than two unknown values so again after the analysis at joint b you will be able to correctly find the values of this force and this force and now the next joint that you should go to is joint number c why because this force is known this force is known this is unknown and this is unknown so again applying the rule you will find that at joint c okay there is one more unknown here that is the reaction so that would have to be found by you beforehand okay this is also unknown so in order to come to joint c or start the analysis at joint c you will have to beforehand calculate the reaction at joint c and by this extension of the same logic you will already know that eventually you will have to come to joint g at some point of time so in order to come to point g you have to beforehand find the reaction at point g also so whether you are solving by method of joints or method of sections it is imperative that the reactions should be found before starting any problem because eventually if you do not find the reactions and just simply randomly start finding the forces some of the forces you will be successfully able to find depending on the problem but eventually you will come to a point when you will get stuck because the reaction force is unknown so whether you are starting method of joints or method of sections you should always remember that the reactions have to be found or rather i should say it they must be found before starting the analysis of anything but anyway let us just complete our recapitulation method of joints progresses like this from one joint to another joint to to still another joint and it keeps on progressing and from each joint analysis you will get one force two force three force and similarly you will keep on finding all the forces and eventually when you finish up all the joints and most probably you won't even have to go to all the joints uh, some joints may even be omitted or rather i should say before coming to all the joints you might be able to find all the forces in the members but eventually the process of 
method of joints progresses like this now another thing i would like to remind you or rather it is a part of recapitulation itself what is involved in the analysis of joint a for example if i come to joint a this is an unknown force this is an unknown force so i am analyzing joint a what do i do at joint a so that i get these two forces basically i am doing nothing new the same old mechanism of engineering mechanics you apply the equations of equilibrium that's all but in method of joints you have to remember there are only two equations available to you so at every joint that you are analyzing for example at joint a you will apply this equation that summation of all the horizontal forces is zero and summation of all the vertical forces is zero you do not apply the third equation of equilibrium which generally goes hand in hand with the other two these are the three brother equations of equilibrium ye bhai hai teeno aur har equilibrium ki condition mein apply hoti hain but in the method of joints you do not apply this third equation why because essentially you are drawing the free body diagram of a single point a there is no body involved here there is no rotation because for rotation you need at least one body and since the free body diagram that you are drawing in the method of joints is simply a point so fbd of point a will be like this these two are unknown forces and this is the known force of 1 kilo newton so this is the diagram on which you do the analysis and since there is no body there is only a single point of which the free body diagram is drawn therefore this equation cannot be applied and that is why the condition is imposed in method of joints that since only two equations will be built by using the equilibrium condition therefore not more than two unknowns should be there and why why are these two conditions interrelated if you have two equations then only two unknowns can be allowed because it simply goes with the mathematical condition that the number of unknowns must be equal to the number of equations only then will you be able to find the number of unknowns if the number of equations is less than the number of unknowns then you won't be able to find all the unknowns and on the other hand if the number of equations is more than the number of unknowns then it is even better it's easy that is called as a redundancy but in this case in the method of joints we do not have this equilibrium equation we only have two equilibrium equations and therefore the condition that not more than two unknown forces can be present on any joint that you are analyzing at a time and similarly by making equations like these for each joint you keep on progressing and finding each individual forces of the members but obviously this is a painstakingly and time consuming task it's difficult because it goes on and on for all the joints now there will be some special questions like this one this problem number 1 it is simply asking you you do only one thing you go for finding the force of bd and cd only don't find the forces here now in this case what you will do is since not all forces are required here only two forces are required in such cases you go for the method of sections so now you have got a differentiating feature on how to use method of joints and how to use method of sections if only a limited number of bars have been asked in the problem then you go for method of sections if all the forces in the bars are asked in the problem then you go for method of joints okay now the problem is can i solve this problem number 1 in which only bd and cd forces are required by method of joints kya main isko method of joints se bhi kar sakta hu kya please anybody start the microphone and give me the answer the answer should be simple yes or no kya is problem ko method of joints se solve kiya ja sakta hai ya nahi anybody
आयुष इज नो बडी लिस्निंग टूडे अभिषेक पांडे सर कर सकते मैं ओके चौधरी संजय वी कैन डू इट राइट वी कैन सॉल्व इट बाय यूजिंग द मेथड ऑफ जॉइंट्स इन द मेथड ऑफ सेक्शंस दैट वी स्टडीड इन द लास्ट क्लास व्हाट वी हैव टू डू इज we have to draw a section line and cut the truss into two different parts the truss has to be separated into two individual parts sub components and the section line should not pass through more than three unknown forces at a given time now why is the condition of three unknown forces imposed here once again the same mathematical condition is coming into play if there are three unknown forces then you should have three equations and what are those three equations of equilibrium that we are allowed to use in method of sections they are summation f horizontal equal to 0 and the other two brothers of this equation summation f vertical equal to 0 and summation moment about any point equal to 0 now in this method all three equations are allowed why is that because the free body diagram is like this you analyze not a single point but a complete part of the truss which will act as a solid body and for a solid body rotation and moments are allowed and therefore when you analyze a complete segment of the whole body you are allowed to use this equation also these two equations are always allowed so in this case in method of sections you have permission to use three equations and therefore the condition that not more than three unknown forces can be allowed so the section should be preferably drawn through the unknown forces that are asked of you aap se problem mein jo do bodies की फोर्सेस पूछी गई है या दो मेंबर्स की फोर्स पूछी गई है उनमें से तो आपका सेक्शन पास होना ही चाहिए लेकिन टोटल तीन अननोन फोर्सेस में से ज्यादा भी पास नहीं होना चाहिए सो दिस सेक्शन व्हिच वी ड्रू इन द लास्ट क्लास इज आइडियल फॉर सॉल्विंग दिस प्रॉब्लम दिस वी हैव ऑलरेडी अंडरस्टूड ओके नाउ दिस इज द सेक्शन दैट द टेक्स्ट बुक हैज ड्रॉन एंड आई टोल्ड यू दैट कर्व्ड सेक्शंस आर आल्सो पॉसिबल but in this case there is no need for a curved section you can simply put a straight line like this this section is also correct now once the section has separated it you will have two different free body diagrams one diagram will be the left side of this section and one diagram will be the right side of this section and again you are permitted to solve the problem of finding bd and cd by using any one of these you can use the left part or the right part any one of them is good enough so what we are going to do is we are going to solve the problem by taking up the left part but now look at the left part in the left part this force is known this force is known this obviously we have to find out because this is the force inside a member this obviously we have to find out because this is again a force inside a member this is appearing in the free body diagram but this is not required for you to find why simple because it is not asked in the question but maybe at some point of time you might be having a need to find this also but we will see when the equations develop we will see whether we have to find this or not but anyway this is an unknown value but there is an undesirable component which is still unknown that is the reaction at point c see we need, we know that c is a roller support so it will obviously support a vertical reaction only but in any case rc is an unknown but the annoying thing about this rc is not that it is unknown 
इट शुड नॉट हैव बीन एन अनोन दैट इज द अनोइंग थिंग मतलब ये कोई अनोन होने की जरूरत नहीं थी ये पता किया जा सकता था आप जब फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम बना रहे हो तो एक नोन है दूसरा नोन है और ये तीसरा वाला जो आर सी है ये नोन हो सकता है ये आप दो मिनट में पता कर सकते हो इसको अनोन की तरह रखने की जरूरत नहीं है सो वॉट वी हैव टू डू इज बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द मेथड ऑफ सेक्शन और रादर अप्लाइंग दीज थ्री इक्विब्रियम इक्वेशन अब यही करना है बस अपने को वी हैव टू अप्लाई समेशन एफ एच इक्वल टू जीरो समेशन एफ वी इक्वल टू जीरो एंड समेशन ऑफ मोमेंट इक्वल टू जीरो these three equations have to be applied on this free body diagram and with the help of these three equations we have to find these two forces fbd and fcd if this force comes out then it's good and okay otherwise it is not asked in the problem but eventually this unknown has to be resolved first ye khali yahan pe unknown ki tarah baitha rahe to solve to hoga hi nahi problem so what you have to do is you abandon your सब सेक्शन हियर इस टुकड़े को यहां पर अभी फिलहाल छोड़ दो गो बैक टू द ओरिजिनल प्रॉब्लम दिस वन बिकॉज रिएक्शन आर बेस्ट फाउंड आउट फ्रॉम द ओरिजिनल प्रॉब्लम सो वॉट डू वी डू इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड दिस रिएक्शन वी डेवलप्ड एन इक्वेशन वी आर कंसिडरिंग द कंप्लीट बॉडी हियर एंड इन द कंप्लीट बॉडी इफ वी आर इग्नोरिंग द फोर्सेज इन द मेंबर्स you see that there are two unknown values only and these two unknown values are the reactions at g and the reaction at point c but we know that reaction at point g is not required by us here why because eventually we have to go back to this free body diagram and only reaction at point c is needed by us so what you are going to do is you simply apply this equation summation of moments about point g why are we taking point g here because if you take the moments about point g since rg is passing through point g the moment of rg will become zero rg is not zero the moment of rg about point g will become zero and if you take the moments of all the other forces these are known forces this is a known force only one unknown force is there so simply by applying one single equation summation of m about point g equal to 0 you will be able to find the value of rc this is something that we did yesterday in the class and eventually we found that rc is equal to 2.625 kN acting in the upward direction so now you have rc also so once rc is known now we apply the method of sections which involves take one part of the section and then apply the three equilibrium equations so now we will go back to this i have taken it up on a fresh page you can see it here and now this is the free body diagram in which rc is also known rc is 2.625 so i will write it here rc this is known now this problem now becomes a simple problem of mechanics now forget that you are doing method of sections or method of joints or you are solving for trusses anything you forget everything you just consider a body like this a solid body which is made like this that's all you forget that there are truss members inside it you just consider a trapezoidal type of object this is what you have to do once you have separated a part out of the truss by drawing the section now that part of the truss has to be treated like a full solid body a full solid body see i am shading everything inside also i don't care whether there are empty spaces inside or rods are connected i am going to consider a full solid body like this see i have shaded everything so i have a solid body and on this solid body 1 2 3 4 5 six forces are acting 
and out of these six forces one two three forces are known to me and i have to find these two forces so if i look at this problem from the perspective of mechanics it is simply a problem of equilibrium since the complete body was in equilibrium under the action of all these forces under the presence of all the stresses and forces of the members everything everything included in the presence of all the forces this whole body was in equilibrium so if i consider a section of the body or a part of the body that part of the body should also be in equilibrium that is the logic that i am going to apply so i am considering this part of the body to be in equilibrium and since this is in equilibrium i must have these three conditions summation of all the horizontal forces appearing on the body should be equal to zero summation of all the vertical forces appearing on the body should also be equal to zero and since in this case i have some body some solid material is there which can rotate in space so i have the summation of moments about any point taken on this plane equal to zero i am not writing a suffix here because that suffix is left up to you about which point you want to take the moments of the forces so anyway now if anybody can put on the microphone and tell me which is the best equation to be applied first should i first apply summation fh equal to 0 summation fv equal to 0 or summation m equal to 0 and if summation m equal to 0 is supposed to be applied then you have to tell me about which point on this object should i take the moments of all the forces the objective is to find fbd and fcd only this is the objective so can anybody switch on the microphone and tell me which equation should i develop first if you are unsure please remember in the examination this is just an iq question that i have asked you jiska iq thoda sa fast hoga thoda sa acha hoga वो इसको गेस कर पाएगा आप पीछे जाकर के शीट में ना देखें क्या लगा रखा है ट्राई टू गेस इट ऑन योर ओन बट इन द एग्जामिनेशन लेट मी टेल यू यू कैन यूज एनी वन ऑफ दिस इक्वेशन आप किसी से भी स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं काम बट लेट मी सी इफ यू कैन गेस इट और नॉट कैन एनी बडी टेल मी विच इक्वेशन इज बेस्ट यूज हियर पहले किसको डेवलप करें is anybody capable of answering no okay i think nobody is listening today <laughs> anyway sir a ah kaun sa lagaye batao a sir two point नहीं इनमें से कौन सी इक्वेशन पहले लगाऊं मैं ये इक्वेशन लगाऊं ये इक्वेशन लगाऊं या ये इक्वेशन लगाऊं अपने को ये मोमेंट मोमेंट वाली इक्वेशन अच्छा ठीक है इफ यू आर सेइंग दैट द मोमेंट इक्वेशन शुड बी यूज्ड फर्स्ट देन यू हैव टू टेल मी आल्सो अबाउट व्हिच पॉइंट बी के अबाउट लूं ए के अबाउट लूं सी के अबाउट लूं या ये जो पॉइंट है इसके अबाउट लूं टेल मी ए ए पॉइंट ए पॉइंट के अबाउट हालांकि देर इज देर इज नो लॉ और नो थियोरी दैट इज प्रिवेंटिंग यू फ्रॉम टेकिंग द मोमेंट ऑफ फोर्सेज अबाउट पॉइंट ए बट आई वुड सजेस्ट पॉइंट सी वाई इज दैट सबसे पहले लाइन ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ फोर्सेज देखो आप लुक एट द लाइन ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ फोर्सेज लेट मी टेक आउट ऑल दिस हैचिंग एंड ऑल द रफ वर्क हियर If I take point C for application of this equation, so the summation of all moments about point C, if I put equal to zero, what is the benefit of using this? The line of action of reaction force passes through C. The line of action of F C E passes through C. The line of action of F C D passes through C. Do you see that? And the only three forces. whose line of action does not pass through point c is fbd 
0.5 and 1. So all the forces whose line of action is passing through point C, their moments will become zero. And we have to find the moments of all the forces. So it is beneficial to select that point from which maximum number of forces are passing so that the moments that you have to calculate are reduced. Now you will see that since the moment of FCD is zero, the moment of FCE is zero, the moment of RC is zero. Now the only remaining moments that will be generated are those of one kilonewton, 0.5 kilonewton and this FBD. And by applying this single equation, you will directly get the value of FBD. Now let us apply this equation. So what is the moment of one kilonewton force about point C? Tell me, how do you calculate the moment Second. of Two okay. kilonewton meter. This will be one, which is the value of force, multiplied by the distance of this force, perpendicular distance from the point at which moment is calculated. That is point C, which is two. Okay. And now I have to apply a plus or minus sign. So what will be the sign of this moment? As you plus. can see, you imagine that a thread is attached here and you fire the rocket at the tail. So this rocket would be forced to rotate about point C in this direction, which is anti-clockwise. So this will be plus. So if you have guessed the plus sign correctly, that is the right answer. So this moment is considered. Ye force khatam. Now, what is the moment of this force about point C? How would you do that? To find that moment, you have to find the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and point C. So I will extend the line of action of this in the downward direction. See, and it is already given in the problem that all triangles are equilateral. So if this is an equilateral triangle, that means this angle is 60. This is 60. And this is 60. So can you guess what will be this distance? This is the distance that we want to find. One meter. Sir. One meter. Because of symmetry. Since these two angles are same, so if I draw a perpendicular bisector starting from the top vertex, this must bisect this bottom line into two equal parts. This is a simple geometric interpretation. So what I will do is I will take this distance of this force from point C as one meter. So now tell me what is the moment of 0.5 kilonewton? 0.5 is the force. So 0.5 kilonewton meter. 0.5 multiplied by the distance from point C, this one distance meter. which is one meter. one meter. And what is the sign, plus or minus? Plus. 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 It, is, it is plus. Once again, the same logic, you fire this rocket at the tail. Along the line of action about point C, it will rotate in this direction. This is also anti-clockwise. So this is also a positive moment. So two forces have been considered. And now the only force that remains to be considered is FBD. So tell me, what is this distance? Now the perpendicular distance is this. This is the perpendicular distance that I'm talking about. How will you calculate this? Go back to the original geometry. This is two meters, right? So this is also two meters. This is also two meters because this is an equilateral triangle. So what is this perpendicular distance? So root three. This perpendicular distance. Root three. This is two. This is 60 degrees. What is this? Let us say this is Y. So that means Y divided by 2 must be equal to sine 60. Right? Look at the geometry. Yes, so Y or this perpendicular distance is simply 2 sine 60. Y 
got it yes sir. so the moment of fbd will be root 3 root 2 is fbd multiplied by 2 sin 60 what is the sign of this moment plus or minus see this is the point this is the thread this is the rocket you fire this rocket at the tail so this will be forced to rotate in which the direction minus. in the clockwise direction okay minus so this has to be a minus moment so these are the three moments what about these forces rc fc e fcd the moments of these forces will be zero because these forces are passing through point c so the distance of these forces from c is zero so there will be no moment at all so only three moments were there and you added them all up with their proper sign and according to this equation that the sum of all the moments about point c you are equating to zero so that means this sum must be equal to zero can you calculate the only unknown force from this equation very easily you can and the answer is already given to us fbd sorry here fbd is given as 1.443 in tension okay and now if you look at your small part that you considered for equilibrium this is known this is known this is known this is known now only two unknowns are there and now you can try any one of these that the summation of horizontal forces is zero see one equation you have already used summation of moments is zero you have already used up now these two equations are remaining which one will you use you can go for summation vertical equal to zero or you can try using summation fh equal to zero but you will see that from this equation you will get two unknown quantities but if you use this equation you will get a single unknown quantity let us try this out let us apply this equation summation of all the vertical forces must be zero because this part is in equilibrium so what are the vertical forces let us calculate each vertical force in the problem one by one with their proper sign first vertical force 1 kN minus 1 why minus 1 because it is acting in the downward direction second vertical force 0.5 kN again minus because this is also vertical third one rc this is vertical but acting upward so i will put a plus sign here and rc was 2.625 so plus 2.625 rc should i take fbd in this equation jo sun rahe hain unko se koi jawab batao fbd no, sir. nahi aayegi bilkul nahi aayegi kyunki fbd horizontal force hai so omit this fce yes sir sir iska wo matlab wo component ki draw kar denge fce kaise aayegi ye bhi to horizontal hai purely horizontal force hai can't you see if f f b d is not taken because of being purely horizontal then how will f c e appear this will also not appear because this is also purely horizontal the only horizontal component that will be extended will be for f c d because this is an angular force ye angle pe khadi hai and what is this angle this is 60 degrees because all the triangles in the figure are equilateral ye clear hua ki nahi hua aapko कि भाई समेशन एफ बी इक्वल टू जीरो में एफ बी डी नहीं आएगा एफ सी ई नहीं आएगा क्यों नहीं आएगा क्योंकि दोनों हॉरिजॉन्टल फोर्सेस हैं 
एफ सी डी का एक कंपोनेंट आएगा कौन सा कंपोनेंट आएगा सिंस वी आर कंसिडरिंग ओनली द वर्टिकल वैल्यूज सो द वर्टिकल कंपोनेंट ऑफ एफ सी डी विल कम एफ सी डी कैन बी रिजोल्व इन टू टू कंपोनेंट एफ सी डी साइन सिक्सटी एंड एफ सी डी कॉस सिक्सटी एफ सी डी कॉस सिक्सटी विल बी हॉरिजोंटल एफ सी डी साइन सिक्सटी विल बी वर्टिकल सो वॉट शुड आई टेक सिंस एफ सी डी साइन सिक्सटी इज वर्टिकली अपवर्ड सो आई विल पुट प्लस एफ सी डी साइन सिक्सटी now i have all the vertical forces minus 1 0.5 2.25 and fcd sin 60 and the sum of all vertical forces is supposed to be equal to 0 so i put this all equal to 0 now i have one equation and one unknown which can be easily found and that should be the end of this problem ab iske baad dekho aapne ye dekha कि मेरे को समेशन एफ एच इक्वल टू जीरो लगाने की जरूरत ही नहीं पड़ी दिस वॉज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड तो अभी तो प्रॉब्लम में आई वॉज असिस्टिंग यू आई टोल्ड यू टू अप्लाई समेशन एम इक्वल टू जीरो फर्स्ट पहले इसको लगाने को कह दिया मैंने आपको यहां पर भी हेल्प कर दी कि भाई इसको आप सी पॉइंट के अबाउट लो तो बहुत अच्छा रहेगा हालांकि ये गाइडलाइंस किसी प्रॉब्लम में नहीं मिलेगी and how do you come to a good intuition like this this type of good intuition of how to solve problems quickly and which are the best points to take moments about which are the best equations to consider initially ye sari aapko knowledge practice ke sath hi aayegi so you have to practice practice and keep on practicing a lot in order to develop a good intuition like this otherwise एक कॉमन स्टूडेंट क्या करेगा फटाक से समेशन एफ एच इक्वल टू जीरो से अपनी मेहनत स्टार्ट कर देगा गलत तो नहीं है गलत किसी किसी एंगल से नहीं है क्योंकि ये तो अलाउड इक्वेशन है आपकी बट इफ यू स्टार्ट विद दिस इक्वेशन यू वुड नॉट गेट एनी आपके समेशन एफ एच जीरो में ये तीनों फोर्सेस आ जाएंगी सो थ्री अनोन एंड वन इक्वेशन सो दिस इक्वेशन इज टोटली यूजलेस फॉर यू इन द बिगिनिंग फिर आप समेशन एफ वी इक्वल टू जीरो लगाओगे उसमें दो उसमें फिर आपके दो अननोन आ जाएगी आर सी अननोन आ जाएगी और ये ये वाली अननोन आ जाएगी तो आप इस तरीके से भटकते रहोगे और किस तरीके से क्विकली आप इक्वेशंस को सॉल्व कर पाओ उसके लिए प्रैक्टिस ही एक जरिया है सो दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ इंट्यूशन विच यू गेट हैज टू कम फ्रॉम प्रैक्टिस बट एनी वे यू अप्लाई द सेम थ्री इक्वेशन एंड यू इवेंचुअली फाउंड आउट एफ एंड एफ the only two forces that were required to be found and since fce is still an unknown value but it is not asked in the problem you don't have to calculate it koi agar teen unknown hai aur puchi do hi hai to isko nahi nikalna hai ye aapka time waste hoga don't waste time forget about it theek hai so this is the solution of this problem now i have given one additional problem for practice let us just look at the example and i will leave you with the guidelines and you solve it at home the answer is given here there are additional problems that i have indicated from the book of bhavi katti 1 2 3 4 there are only four solved examples from method of sections so what you have to do since you are only following one book aap bahut zyada kitabon se refer kar nahi rahe ho wo maine aapko suggest bhi nahi kiya aisa karne ke liye so what you guys do is you at least solve these four problems and this problem to consider yourself sufficiently prepared with the method of sections theek okay? hai now again determine the forces in the bars bd cd and ce kon kon si bars puch raha hai ye bd this one cd this one and ce that is this one so look at the nature of the problem 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 11 bars are there but it is asking you to solve for only three bars so which method is suitable here although the question explicitly says that method of sections has to be used by you but if it is not given in the problem in rtu if the problem simply ends here 
to determine the forces in these three then obviously you know that method of joints is not the proper way to go about it since only three forces are asked it is best to use method of sections ab seedhi si baat hai ki agar method of sections use karna hai ye pata karna hai ye pata karna hai force in this force in this and force in this how do i proceed about it सेक्शन कैसे बनाऊंगा सबसे पहले तो ये बता हाउ डू आई ड्रॉ द सेक्शन दैट इज द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट यू नीड टू गेस सेक्शन ड्रॉ करने का आपको नियम मैं वापस से याद दिला दूं द सेक्शन लाइन शुड कट द कंप्लीट ट्रस इनटू टू डिफरेंट पार्ट्स पूरी दो टुकड़े हो जाने चाहिए ट्रस के दो से ज्यादा भी नहीं होने चाहिए दूसरा नियम यह कहता है द सेक्शन लाइन शुड नॉट पास थ्रू मोर देन थ्री अनोन फोर्सेस and your logic suggests that the section line should pass through all those members on which forces are required to so section line ki logic to aapki ye kehti hai ki bhai aisi line banao jo bd cd aur ce ke andar se to guzre hi tabhi to wo solve hogi to batao section line kaise banaye this is pretty simple anybody should be able to guess batao bd मैं एक लाइन मैं एक लाइन बनाता हूं आप बता देना सही है क्या इज दिस करेक्ट यस बस सिंपल यस सर इसमें कोई दिक्कत ही नहीं है आपकी सारी प्रॉब्लम एक ही एक ही लाइन ने सॉल्व कर दी इस लाइन को खींचने से आपके ट्रस्ट दो टुकड़ों में भी टूट जाएगी इस लाइन को खींचने से आपकी जो रिक्वायर्ड वैल्यूज है उन सबके अंदर से भी ये लाइन जा रही है बीडी से जा रही है सीडी से जा रही है और सीई से भी जा रही है सो दिस शुड सॉल्व योर प्रॉब्लम नाउ इस तरह से अपन ने पिछली प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व की थी नाउ लुक एट द वैल्यूज और लुक एट द लोकेशन ऑफ सपोर्ट इसमें मेरे को आप फिगर को देख करके बताओ आई विल एनलार्ज द फिगर लुक एट द फिगर एंड टेल मी हाउ मेनी सपोर्ट आर गिवन फॉर द ट्रस्ट कितने सपोर्ट है टू या फोर टू सर टू सपोर्ट ओनली यहां पर सपोर्ट नहीं है यहां पर सपोर्ट नहीं है दिस इज अ पिन ज्वाइंटेड सपोर्ट दिस इज अ रोलर सपोर्ट बट नाउट लुक एट द नेचर ऑफ एक्सटर्नल फोर्सेस एंड टेल मी विल देर बी एनी हॉरिजोंटल रिएक्शन कंपोनेंट और नॉट इस प्रॉब्लम में हॉरिजॉन्टल रिएक्शन कंपोनेंट होगा या नहीं होगा नहीं होगा सर नहीं होगा सर वाई बिकॉज ऑल द एक्सटर्नल फोर्सेस दैट आर अप्लाइड आर वर्टिकल वन वर्टिकल वन एंड अगेन वर्टिकल वन जब आपकी अप्लाइड फोर्सेस में ही कोई हॉरिजॉन्टल कंपोनेंट नहीं है तो आपकी रिएक्शन में भी हॉरिजोंटल कंपोनेंट नहीं हो सकता पीरियड एंड ऑफ स्टोरी ठीक है now as it was discussed in the previous problem no matter how you draw the section line so what you will do is as it is clearly seen ki ye wala jo tukda hai ye thoda sa chhota hai ye tukda lenge ab apan see now i am drawing this and i will consider this whole body as a single object of interest this shaded portion will be treated as a single piece and what will be the external forces acting on it i will draw the free body diagram like this i am drawing the free body diagram of your piece now as you can see there is an internal segment here also yahan par ek internal piece bhi hai lekin usko banane ki zarurat hi nahi hai aapko you don't have to draw it i will simply draw the free body diagram like this reaction at point a रिएक्शन सी पॉइंट पर रिएक्शन नहीं आएगा देर विल बी ए फोर्स फॉर दिस मेंबर सीई की एक फोर्स होगी सो दिस विल बी एफ सीई देर विल बी ए फोर्स फॉर दिस मेंबर दैट इज एफ सी डी तो यहां पर आप अपनी लोकेशन पे ऐसे बना दो इसको बस एफ सी डी 
that there will be a force in the member bd which is along this line so you draw fbd bas itni si diagram banani hai aapko you don't have to draw whatever is inside ye agar aap banana chahte ho to bana do but it it does not matter this is fbd this is the free body diagram aur ye fbd fbd fcd aur fce ki direction maine kaise li मुझे कैसे पता लगा कि ये सब बाहर कोई होगी मुझे नहीं पता आई डोंट नो आई जस्ट एज्यूम्ड इट एंड इफ इट इज इनकरेक्ट माई सोल्यूशन विल ऑटो करेक्ट इट ये इसको ऑटो करेक्ट कर लेगा कि भाई बाहर को है कि अंदर को है इट विल बी ऑटो करेक्टेड ठीक है एंड इज देर एनी अदर फोर्स दैट आई एम मिसिंग यस दिस वन किलो न्यूटन फोर्स इज मिसिंग सो आई विल अप्लाई दिस वन किलो न्यूटन फोर्स विच इज वर्टिकल सो दिस बिकम्स द फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम ऑफ Your problem. अब आपको क्या करना है यह आपका फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम बन गया दिस इज द बॉडी रियक्शन एफ सी एफ सी डी एफ बी डी वन दिज आर द एक्सटर्नल फोर्सेज एक्टिंग ऑन योर फ्री बॉडी दिस रियक्शन हैज टू बी फाउंड बाय बाय एफ बी डी तो निकालनी है एफ सी डी निकालनी है और एफ सी ई निकालनी है इन दिस प्रॉब्लम ऑल थ्री फोर्सेज आर नीडेड ये तीनों निकालनी है आपको तो अब इस केस में एक आर ए है जिसको कि आप पहले से ही निकाल सकते थे सो दिस इज द फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम दैट यू विल ड्रॉ बट हाउ टू फाइंड आर ए अब आर ए निकालने के लिए आप उस पार्ट पे जाओ जब आपने इसके टुकड़े नहीं करे थे यू कम टू द ओरिजिनल बॉडी नाउ यू सी दैट देर इज अ रियक्शन एट ए and there is a reaction at g and both will be vertical we have already discussed why okay now considering the complete body in equilibrium i have recourse to all these three equations that the sum of all the horizontal forces acting on the full body will be zero the summation of all the vertical forces acting on the full body will be zero and the summation of moments taking about any point on the plane would also be equal to zero yahi teen equations use karke apan ne pichli problem mein bhi reaction nikala tha and since i know that i am going to use only this part of the problem aur is part of problem mein sirf r a appear ho rahi hai to mere ko r g nikalne ki zarurat hi nahi hai i don't want r g i only want r a so what i can do is i can simply take moments of all the forces about point g point g ke about agar main sari forces ka moment le lunga to r g jo hai equation mein se gayab ho jayegi kyun because r g is passing through point g therefore r g will not create any moment in this equation and only unknown value will be r a lekin ab main aap se ye keh raha hu कि मैं तो ये तीनों इक्वेशन ही नहीं लगाऊंगा आई विल नॉट वेस्ट टाइम फॉर दिस प्रॉब्लम आई आई डू नॉट नीड एनी इक्वेशन कैन एनीबडी गेस व्हाई? देखो तरीका तो यही है तरीका अपन ने पिछले बार भी देखो इस प्रॉब्लम में भी ये टुकड़ा लिया था वी टुक दिस पीस और इसमें देखा था कि आर सी एक रिएक्शन पड़ रही है और रिएक्शन तो आपको निकालनी निकालनी है किसी भी हालत में तो आपने फिर क्या किया था बोला कि टुकड़े को एक सेकंड के लिए छोड़ दो वापस से ओरिजिनल बॉडी पे जाओ और ओरिजिनल बॉडी की सारी फोर्सेस लेकर के आप पॉइंट जी के अबाउट मोमेंट लो तो आर सी मिल जाएगी और ये किया भी था ये देखो टेकिंग मोमेंट्स अबाउट पॉइंट जी एडिंग देम इक्वल टू जीरो यू फाउंड आउट एन इक्वेशन एंड यू गेस्ट द वैल्यू ऑफ आर सी अब इस प्रॉब्लम में मैं आपको क्या कह रहा हूं कि मैं ये काम करूंगा ही नहीं और देखो अभी ये प्रॉब्लम में कहीं पर भी मैंने आर ए की जो वैल्यू है यहां पर अपन को आर ए चाहिए आर जी नहीं चाहिए मगर अब देखो आप जादू जादू नहीं है दिस इज कॉमन सेंस कॉमन लॉजिक ठीक है लिसन वेरी केयरफुली मैं सीधे एक कैलकुलेशन करके आपको बता रहा हूं आर ए डेढ़ किलो न्यूटन अब आप बता दो ये मैं कहां से पता करके लाया 
no calculation no moments no summation fh summation fv moment summation zero nothing i applied nothing i saved so much time in the examination that it is a very big boost for me aur rg mujhe nahi chahiye lekin lo ye bhi maine guess kar liya it is also 1.5 kilo newton now can anybody tell me ye aisa kaun sa logic maine use kar liya jisse ki bina equations ko use kiye main seedhe reaction guess kar raha hu how was i able to do this can anybody guess वापस से बोलो ज्योमेट्री वेरी गुड ज्योमेट्रिकल सिमेट्री बिकॉज ऑफ द सिमेट्री ऑफ द फिगर ये देखो भाई आप इस तरीके की सिमेट्रीज को हमेशा देखने की कोशिश करें लेट अस टेक अ सिंपली सपोर्टेड बीम एक सिंपली सपोर्टेड बीम ले ली पॉइंट ए और पॉइंट बी पे एक बीम को सिर्फ रखा हुआ है और इस बीम के बिल्कुल बीचों बीच मैंने 10 न्यूटन की फोर्स लगाई अब बताओ रिएक्शन एट ए कितना होगा रिएक्शन एट बी कितना होगा इसमें कोई शक्की नहीं है रिएक्शन एट ए विल बी इक्वल टू फाइव न्यूटन एंड रिएक्शन एट बी विल ऑल्सो भी इक्वल टू फाइव न्यूटन कैसे पता किया भाई किसी दो सपोर्ट पे अगर बिल्कुल बीचों बीच कोई भार रख दिया जाए तो दोनों सपोर्ट्स पे बराबर रिएक्शन ही तो पैदा होगा ना अलग अलग रिएक्शन कब पैदा होता है अगर ये 10 न्यूटन मैं थोड़ा सा सरका के यहां लगा दूं तब मेरे को मोमेंट लगाने की जरूरत पड़ेगी देन आई विल हैव टू अप्लाई द समेशन ऑफ एम इक्वल टू जीरो टू फाइंड द रिएक्शन एट डिफरेंट पोजिशन लेकिन अगर बीचो बीच सिमेट्रिकली दस न्यूटन रख दू तो फिर इसमें कोई शक ही नहीं है अच्छा अब दूसरी बात यहां पर मैंने दस न्यूटन रखा था अब यहां से एक मीटर दूर दो न्यूटन रख रहा हूं और यहां से एक मीटर दूर दो न्यूटन रख रहा हूं अब बताओ रिएक्शन कितनी हो जाएगी टेल मी व्हाट विल बी द रिएक्शन दोनों की जो रिएक्शंस हैं वो इजीली गैस हो जाएगी देखो टोटल लोड कितना है टेन प्लस टू प्लस टू फोर्टीन न्यूटन बट द कंप्लीट लोड इज सिमेट्रिकली प्लेस्ड ओवर द सिंपली सपोर्टेड बीम ये दो न्यूटन इस सपोर्ट से एक मीटर इधर को है ये दो न्यूटन इस सपोर्ट से एक मीटर इधर को है और ये दस न्यूटन बिल्कुल बीचो बीच है सो दिस इज अमेट्रिक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ पॉइंट लोड तो सिमेट्रिक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ लोड कभी भी आपको दिख जाए तो वहां पर फटाक से टाइम सेव कर लो दिमाग ही मत लगाओ आप अपने हाथ से आंसर कॉपी में ये स्टेटमेंट लिखेंगे और ये आपको लिखना भी है सिंस द अरेंजमेंट ऑफ फोर्सेस इज सिमेट्रिकल देर फोर इक्वल रिएक्शन विल बी डेवलप्ड बस सिंपल सी बात तो ये दोनों रिएक्शन हो गए चौदह टोटल फोर्स है तो सात न्यूटन यहां आ जाएगा सात न्यूटन यहां आ जाएगा बस इतनी सी बात है नाउ दैट इज एग्जैक्टली वॉट आई सॉ हियर ये देखो ये पूरी जो ट्रायंगल जिसमें बन रही हैं दे आर ऑल सिमेट्रिकल इन शेप ठीक है ये सारी सिमेट्री है और ये बिल्कुल सिमेट्रिकल लोकेशन पे वन 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 तो तीन किलो न्यूटन की टोटल लोड है तो आर ए कितना हो गया डेढ़ हो गया बस तो ये प्रॉब्लम तो पिछली वाली प्रॉब्लम से भी ज्यादा आसान है क्योंकि इसके अंदर आपको रिएक्शन फाइंड करने के लिए इक्वेशन नहीं लगानी पड़ी Did you get this trick? इस तरह के ट्रिक्स को याद रखना एग्जाम में बहुत जरूरी है अदरवाइज आपके दस मिनट यहाँ पे खराब हो जाएंगे रिएक्शन पता करने में जिसकी जरूरत ही नहीं थी सिमेट्री से सीधे गैस कर लो सो यू हैव टू कीप ऑल दीज थिंग्स इन माइंड ठीक है एंड वंस यू गेट द सिमेट्री दिस वॉज योर सेक्शन लाइन अब आपको आर ए मिल गया नाउ यू गेस द वैल्यूज ऑफ दिस फोर्स दिस फोर्स एंड दिस फोर्स यूजिंग द थ्री इक्वेशन ब्रदर्स ऑफ इक्विलिब्रियम अब इस सेक्शन के ऊपर ये जो आपका फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम मैंने पहले बना के दिखाया था अब इस फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम पे आप समेशन एफ एच इक्वल टू जीरो लगाओ समेशन एफ वी लगाओ और समेशन एम लगाओ और इन तीनों से पता करो कि कौन कौन सी अनोन फोर्सेस कैसे कैसे डायरेक्शन में लग रही है द आंसर आर गिवन हियर यू ऑल ट्राई दिस प्रॉब्लम एट होम बिल्कुल उसी तरीके से जैसे ये पहले किया था इफ यू आर स्टक लुक एट द वीडियो रिकॉर्डिंग 
फॉर दिस टूडेज लेक्चर एंड यू विल गेट हेल्प फ्रॉम देयर आपको पूरी चीजें पता लग जाएगी कैसे करना है ट्राई टू सॉल्व इट और अगर उसके बावजूद कोई प्रॉब्लम आती है यू गिव मी अ कॉल इफ इट इज रिक्वायर्ड आई विल इवन कम टू अ पर्सनल वीडियो मीटिंग विथ यू जिससे कि आपकी प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व हो जाए लेकिन रेगुलर बेसिस पे प्लीज पढ़ाई करते रहें प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व करते रहें डू नॉट बी लेजी ऑनलाइन क्लासेस में अभी जैसे आज भी मेरे को पता लगा पहले से भी ये दिस इज नॉट अ मिस्ट्री दैट मेनी एटलीस्ट एट्टी परसेंट ऑफ स्टूडेंट आर नॉट लिसनिंग टू द लेक्चर दे आर सिंपली पुटिंग ऑन देयर ऑनलाइन प्रेजेंस एंड गोइंग अवे टू डू सम अदर पर्सनल वर्क लेकिन ये आपको बहुत नुकसान देगा इस तरह से एंड मोमेंट में पढ़ाई करना एंड दो आर लिस्निंग एंड पेइंग अटेंशन वेरी गुड फॉर दो गाइज कीप इट अप कीप द एफर्ट एंड प्लीज सॉल्व दीज एग्जाम्पल्स ऑल्सो ये सॉल्व एग्जाम्पल्स हैं इसमें आपको ज्यादा मेहनत नहीं लगेगी सिर्फ कैसे सोल्यूशन किया है देख लो बस आप तो एटलीस्ट प्रैक्टिस तो हो जाएगी और बहुत अच्छी बात होगी अगर आप इनको अपने हाथ से सॉल्व करके फिर आंसर चेक करो सो प्लीज डू दैट ओके नाउ प्लीज डोंट गो अवे आई विल जस्ट कलेक्ट योर अटेंडेंस एंड वेन आई से यू लीव द ग्रुप ठीक है एक मिनट आप रुकी Forty-eight. Clear. Refresh. Forty-eight. Download. 